Good evening. I think we're about ready to start tonight for our great lecture series. It's an absolute honor for me to introduce our featured speaker, Dr. Shonda French. Dr. French is a faculty member in the Communication Arts Department, and tonight she's going to discuss her research regarding work-spouse relationships. The title of her presentation is My Confident, My Coworker, The Interpersonal Relationship of Work Spouses. Please join me in welcoming Dr. John French. Thank you so much. Wow. I hear some extra credit was encouraged. One point in one class. We won't name any names. But um, thank you for coming tonight. Give me just two seconds. So how many of you are familiar with the term work spouse? <laughs> OK. And when I say the term work spouse, what comes to mind, just out of curiosity? <laughs> Someone you spend more time with than your actual spouse. Okay. That you work with. That okay. You have to trust and and care about, or you come to care about and trust similarly to a spouse. All right. Good. I would. Anybody else want to? A coworker that you confide in. A coworker that you confide in. Anyone else? Well, perhaps you've seen some memes or some some e cards or even seen on television. You should get a work husband. Really? Yes. Although when you flirt, just be Or perhaps you find yourself in a work spouse relationship and you realize reality television is the way to go and you're going to this casting call for work spouses. Or perhaps you're going through a work spouse divorce and you're requesting sole custody of the plants. So I think that there's many ideas out there as to what constitutes a work spouse relationship. And according to psychiatrist Jacqueline Olds, it's defined as a person at work with whom you share a special relationship in which you share confidences, loyalties, experiences, and a degree of honesty and openness. Just to keep the, the humor going a little bit. So obviously these some e-cards, people clearly perceive themselves to have a work spouse, or they at least think they do. And so this was part of my doctoral dissertation research at the University of Southern Mississippi. And when asked during my prospectus why I wanted to study work spouses, um, it's a known fact that we spend more and more time at work nowadays. I think the average American works about 50 hours a week. Um, American work weeks are notably longer than comparable advanced countries. And yet there's minimal academia scholarly research done on this. So I wanted to know, my first question I inquired was do people even believe that work spouses are such a relationship? Uh, a lot of people don't believe in them. They say it's just someone that you're close friends with that happens to work with you. And so I did a qualitative study, solely like I said, there's not much done in terms of scholarly research, and so I figured the more information I gathered, the better. And so I started with a snowball sampling method, and I sent out an email, and people put it on their social media, just inquiring that if you knew someone or you yourself were in a close, intimate, relationship and I specifically didn't put work spouse in there because my committee wanted me to look at do people even think that this is a concept does it even truly exist and it was interesting to note that fewer than one half of the people that took the survey qualified to be interviewed um, and the questions ranged from certain things like 
Are there specific jokes that you and a coworker share? Could you order coffee for this coworker? Um, do you go to them for aspirin or snacks or drinks? And so I took these questions from popular media sites such as fortune.com, cnn.com. Dr. Phil often likes to talk about work spouses. And so if people answered the questions correctly, um, in terms of they had to answer a certain way for six out of the eight questions, then um, my doctoral chair and I decided that they qualified indeed to be interviewed. And so my next step was to ask them if they wanted to be interviewed um, in an in-depth in interview. And so some people said no, which is totally fine. And then the majority, however, said yes, I'd absolutely love to help better understand this. And so my sample was 30 participants, and there were 24 females, and there were six males. And I'll talk a little bit later about how there was the gender imbalance and perhaps why that is. Um, and they came all the way from rural Nebraska to New Orleans. And then in terms of job op occupations, um, everything from being in the entertainment industry to education to sales and marketing, so a wide, you know, wide variety of jobs. It's also important to note that um, some were single, some were married. There were also same-sex work-spouse relationships and there were also opposite-sex work-spouse relationships. And so post-interview, I read, I listened, I read, I listened, read and listened again, um, and then transcribed and analyzed my data in the qualitative software program in vivo. And I maintained validity by, I traveled to Southern Miss in March, and my doctoral chair and I got together to code to make sure we were on the same page. And so research question one. Like I said, the first thing that my committee wanted me to look at was do work spouses even exist? Are they a unique type of relationship or are they just work friendships? And the second part of research question one was what dimensions and characteristics of intimate relationships exist between work spouses? And for the first half, yes, a work spouse is a unique type of intimate relationship according to my 30 participants. And I make this argument because the majority of the participants truly believed that they had a work spouse and they identified it as a unique intimate relationship. And the data anal analysis also supported this type of uniqueness. And in terms of uniqueness, and these are alias names, if you know someone that perhaps was in the study. Um, Kaylin claimed, I don't have that kind of relationship with anybody else in the office. And Kara indicated, this is not just a work relationship. On the contrary, though, to the uniqueness, Others compared it to additional types of intimate relationships we think of, so family members, friendships, romantic partners. And the second half of research question one was what dimensions and characteristics of intimate relationships exist between work spouses? And so here's the themes I found and then the sub-themes that go in those themes. And the number one thing that people believed was the reason that this was a work spouse relationship was they spent time outside of work together. So whether it was going to lunch every day or whether it was happy hour or whether it was attending a friend's birthday party, they said the biggest thing was just spending time. A work spouse relationship is not just an eight to five Monday through Friday thing. The next is the importance of the relationship. Um, I had probably about one third that when I asked them, what does this relationship mean to you? They said something to the effect of he or she means the world to me. Um, and so they really value this in terms of emotional attachment, connection. Also comparisons of other intimate relationships was a dimension and characteristic found. Like I said, a lot of times they would call it something like, it's almost like a brotherhood or we have a father-daughter relationship almost. Um, one work spouse couple talked about how um, their children called each other aunt and uncles. And then with a lot of 
um, intimate relationships, with the good comes the bad. So not surprisingly, there's positive characteristics and dimensions to having a work spouse, and there's also negatives. So going back to the first theme, if you look at spending time outside of work, here's an example. Devin stated, we are good friends outside of work, and we know a lot about our personal lives. She threw me a baby shower for my daughter, Jaden, and I go to her kids' soccer games. And in terms of the second theme, importance of the relationship, Tyler indicated, I care if she's happy or if she's upset, just as much as I would with really any, with any really, really close friend. I mean, you start to feel like a family. You care about all aspects of their life. You care if their kids are happy and what's going on. And in relation to comparison of other intimate relationships, Terry explained, it's almost like a brotherhood. And Elsa expressed, she's like my big sister at work and refers to me as her little sister. So, the positives of having a work spouse relationship. Dave said, let's face it, at the end of the day, relationships are built and reinforced on trust and respect. I am not afraid to tell her how valuable she is to me how much I appreciate her, thanking her regularly. She's one of the few people that puts up with my shit. And these are verbatim quotes. Kaylin, however, said, I find myself a lot of the time kinda embarrassed with how she acts with my other coworkers. She'll just be downright rude to them and I have to kinda be this go-between. And other negatives were, Jealousy, overemphasized conflicts. So the next thing I looked at was research question two inquired, how has having a work spouse affected the professional relationships and also the personal relationships of respondents? And not surprisingly, both positively and negatively. Positively, Bobby Joe illustrated, when she's gone, I back her up, do her work, and when I'm gone, she'll do my work. We're very compatible work-wise. In similarities in terms of work ethic, also interest, humor, a lot of the respondents talked about similarities being one of the reasons that they found their work spouse. However, negatively, Devin said, if she's having a bad day, I do feel like it rubs off on me because we do use each other to vent to. I want to say, shut up. Now you're ruining my day. You can't keep doing this because you're ruining my day. In terms of personal relationships, they too were found to cause both positive and negative reactions. Bobby claimed, and Bobby is different than Bobby Joe, by the way. Bobby claimed his work spouse relationship was probably beneficial for his marriage. However, Dave's wife questioned him and stated, wouldn't you just rather be with her? So the next thing I wanted to do is I took some calm research and I looked at some models and theories in communication and I wanted to see where work spouses, if at all, went into, um, fit into these theories and models. And so research question three looked at what is the impetus for work spouse relationships? In other words, how do they develop? Why do they develop? And here are the themes that I found. And by far the theme that was most commonly occurring were difficulties. So difficulties at work, difficulties perhaps with clients or other coworkers. Um, several talked about maybe a difficult boss or manager. And so that was the biggest theme found was just difficulties at work unified them and brought them together. Also similarities, so again the humor, interest, viewpoints, emotional attachment, working closely together was a theme. A lot of people talked about, you know, we worked in the same office, but until we were both brought on just together to do this project, or until we moved and had to sit right next to each other in a cubicle. And then outside of work, 
Also self-disclosure, both disclosing things professionally and personally and knowing it's not going to go anywhere, or hopefully not. And then the importance of the friendship, acknowledging it both at work and home. Um, the majority of the participants that discussed this theme talked about, you know, my family at home knows who this is, or my work spouse spends time with my family. And then the acknowledgement of being more than just a coworker, which goes into also friend and the uniqueness. And then transformation was the last theme. And this they talked about, you know, this person's changed my life for the better. So maybe they were less stressed because of this work spouse. Or maybe they had taught them to listen more effectively. So going with some of the top themes discovered, difficulties. Buffy talked about another coworker kind of went crazy, so she got fired. And so if anything, that kind of solidified Dave and I to say, like, well, I'm here and I'm not crazy and not going anywhere. Courtney discussed the common sense of humor. I just hadn't found that with anyone else. And a lot of people talked about humor as being a reason that they connected with this person. And I think if we look at our lives, we all know, you know, some people have one sense of humor, some have another. So I can see where this would be a reason. <coughs> Next, work closely. And Sandy talked about how her success directly affects my success, and that has kind of forced our relationship. And so she, Sandy basically talked about, you know, we didn't start as friends, but it was like, well, how I do is going to affect you and vice versa. And thankfully, it just worked out that they also had a lot of um, similar interests and so that relationship developed. So, what to take away from this study? Because I want to leave a good amount of time for you to ask questions. Um, also, maybe give me ideas for future research because this is something that I want to take a look at. Um, to continue to take a look at. So yes, it is a unique relationship. And part of my job um, assigned from my doctoral committee was that they wanted a new definition, an emergent definition of work spouses. So not just Jacqueline Olds or what Dr. Phil, Phil thinks is a work spouse, but they said take your data and you yourself write a work spouse definition. And so I came up with a coworker someone is invested in, both inside and outside of the workplace, is a valued, long-term, intimate partner. Not just a close coworker, a work spouse is a genuine companion with whom one seeks to spend quality time, including outside of the work environment. Moreover, work spouse relationships are intimate relationships consisting of high levels of emotional attachment, trust, and respect. Lastly, these unique relationships are often built upon similarities found between the two people, in including comparable humor, interests, activities, and viewpoints. So if you go and you look at calm theories and models, Mark Knapp's relational model, I took the stages of his relational model, and I was able to take participants information that they gave me and apply it to particular stages. So for instance, the experimenting stage. And in this stage, Knapp argues that people are just starting to get to know one another to see if they want some type of relationship to form, whether it be a romantic or a friendship. And so Bobby Joe st talked about in the experimenting stage, we started going on walks around the campus, then working out after work. In the bonding stage, which is generally where two people um, move in together or get married or people just know that's his or her best friend. In the bonding phase, Kara said her family has become my family. In terms of social penetration theory, um, Altman and Taylor discuss a lot about self-disclosure and how we, when we get to know people, we open up more to them um, in terms of what we disclose to them and um, in the levels of breadth and depth involved with it. And Marissa talked about, with Nancy having that ridiculously safe place, I can see myself one time in her kitchen literally sliding the, down the wall in tears. And then another example um, was unfortunately broken tr trust. And Jane talked about how she went to her work spouse and she had said, hey, this is happening 
please don't let anybody know, but I wanted you to know. And she said within the next day, people started asking her about this. And she said, it, you know, it broke, it broke our friendship to an extent and it broke my heart because I, you know, I specifically confided in her. Um, and so with, you know, additional types of intimate relationships, I think when that trust is broken, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking. And then social exchange theory, it looks at the rewards and costs. And basically this theory says, generally speaking, we try to balance out the rewards and costs of a relationship. And so Kaylin said, my mom is always telling me, this is not your real friend. Remember this. And my husband says the same thing. It's been a real struggle. I purposefully will talk things down. I feel like I'm very self-conscious of the relationship. I'd like to be genuine friends with her and not have this weird power dynamic. And this was a very interesting interview. Um, her work spouse happened to be her boss. And so it was interesting to me that she felt like she had all these qualities of trust and appreciation and respect. And then, you know, this quote almost contradicts when she said, I, f I would like to be genuine friends with her. So. Further application, you know, it's like a lot of intimate relationships in terms of that they just happen, right? You can't force them, things just naturally happen. And so I wouldn't necessarily encourage nor discourage these types of relationships. They either form or they don't form. I don't think people go to work, you know, and start a job one day and say, I'm gonna find a work spouse today or I'm gonna find a work husband. Um, but I do think that you need to keep in mind that they probably should be strategically managed, especially in terms of power differences. There were several that there was a power difference and they were very aware of that and, um, and it could cause conflict or issues. And one lady talked about how she was thinking she was going to get a promotion and she said, if I get this promotion, I know it's going to you know, directly influence how we interact right now. And as I said before, they often develop in a similar fashion to other intimate relationships. Unfortunately, no research is perfect. Um, and so the first thing was the overrepresented sample. I didn't plan on having 24 females and six males. It just kind of happened um, that way. And as I defended my dissertation, we discussed it some, and I think um, especially I had a lot of same-sex couples in the few opposite sex couples that I did have they were they made note quite often that hey there's nothing romantic going on and so I don't know if you hear the term work spouse and how many of you associate a romantic connotation with it no it's okay I mean I, a lot of people do absolutely and so I don't know if that you know concerned people um, but it was not purposefully that I planned to have 24 females and six males. And the next thing is the lack of dyadic data. So in other words, there were times where two people would fill out the survey because they were like, oh, we know we're work spouses. And one per perhaps did not qualify. They did not answer six of those eight questions correctly, um, which brings an interesting you know, an interesting notion on how well maybe they do know it and one another. Um, I also had people who came in together as a dyadic couple, or so I thought, and then, so one did their interview separately, and then I met with another one thinking, oh, that's their work spouse, and they would talk about someone else. So I didn't have, I would have loved to have had 15 work spouse couples, but it did not work out that way. And in terms of um, organizational and interpersonal communication, I think there's a lot of different avenues you could explore here. In terms of organizational, I think the power thing is a huge play in how people manage it and how it potentially affects work. Uh, most of the participants talked about my work spouse makes work more enjoyable. Um, and then on the contrary, they'd say, you know, we maybe take breaks a little bit longer. So I think, you know, there's a lot of things you can study from an organizational standpoint. Um, and then with the interpersonal, I would definitely like to look back, uh, or I would like to in the future look more at how do these relationships affect people at home? Because it seemed to be they either were very positive, oh, my family knows about my work spouse, they love him or her just as much as I do, or it was more negative, whereas 
I don't trust this person, I don't care to be around them. And so I think that would be interesting. And I also think it'd be interesting, um, there's been a few work spouse couples that I know have um, split up due to a new job. And I would also like to look at those. There was one couple in particular that she had just transitioned to a new building across town. And she said, it's, it's directly influenced you know, our relationship. She said, I travel way more. Um, and I know it's made a difference and it's not on purpose and we can pick up just like we did. But so I think that would be something interesting instead. So in conclusion, you now have um, an academia definition of work-spouse relationships. Uh, however, there is a lot that still needs to be done in terms of both quantitative and qualitative research. Um, and I'll open the, the discussion for questions now. Thank you so much. Or comments, I guess I should say. And what's the role of the investigator as far as gender? Um, if you were, if a male was trying to do the same sort of work, would the supposition be that more men would speak to the male investigator? Or what? Hmm. That's a good, that's a good question, Kurt. Because the, I mean, the males, one in particular, I bet probably almost every other minute of his like 45 minute to hour interview, he would say, I'm very conscious of our relationship. We're not crossing boundaries. And I, you know, as the investigator, I didn't, I'm receptive and welcome and, you know, opening. And so I don't think that I gave anything, you know, to make him assume that. So that would definitely be interesting to see if, say, you interviewed that person instead. Uh, okay, so yeah, just following on what Carl uh, asked, so methodological question, first of all, how do you recruit uh, those participants? What sampling technique? And the, uh, uh, another question, uh, did your participants uh, characterize their relationship as uh, work spouse or you gave uh, the name, uh, that, uh, you gave that mm -hmm. name based on their information? Mm -hmm. The, um, the first one, I did a snowball sampling method, and so I sent out an email to my place of employment inquiring, um, and the email was very vague and purposefully so because we didn't want to use the term work spouse in it. And then also several people from across the U.S. posted it on their Facebook pages, the same message I sent out that I was looking for people to be interviewed, um, inquiring if they had uh, a close, working, intimate relationship but my committee purposefully didn't want me to use the term work spouse. And so going back to that, when I asked their questions during their interview, if they did qualify, I would just ask them, do you, do you believe you have a work spouse? And so that's how that came about. Yeah. Did you actually use the word intimate when you asked? <clears throat> um, asked in the email? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did that not? And I think that's it too. I think, you know, in terms of intimacy, we often at times presume intimacy to have that romantic connotation when in fact it doesn't necessarily, you know, intimate relationships or family, friends. So that certainly could have been too. And then as a follow-up, how many of the participants actually had beyond like the regular like close friend type relationship with that other person? Or was that was that like in there at all? Because of the word intimate, like how many of those people were actually have like involved with their work spouse? You mean romantically involved? Yeah. Uh, none to my knowledge. None to my knowledge. Which is, I gave this presentation to another group, and they said they're lying. <laughs> I would hope not, but <laughs> yes, sir. You know, something that I've observed is 15 years ago. My wife was very jealous of my work spouses, male or female, uh -huh. because I was with them right. 15, 16 hours a day, especially mm -hmm. when I was in the Army, a lot more time than I was at home. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I found in recent years that doesn't exist anymore. She, she doesn't view them as a threat. She doesn't, you know, and, and actually communicates and, and, and uh, socializes with those folks 
as if they're she's their work spouse. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe that's because I communicate more with her mm -hmm. about those relationships and the things that 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 um, we go that go on in those relationships. Maybe it, maybe I'm communicating that better now. Mm -hmm. That'd be interesting. I'm um, two of the opposite sex couples were. Um, all the participants were in like their early 30s and it'd be interesting to see them down the road because they talked about um, in fact Dave my example of his wife asking wouldn't you rather just be with her he later talked about how um, you know he's Uncle Dave and his wife is aunt so-and-so and that when they went on trips and stuff oh we've got to get you know the baby a gift and so it was an interesting, you know, she said, well, wouldn't you rather be with him? But then, oh, let's get a gift for, for the baby. So, and then an, another thing, um, another opposite sex couple, the guy talked about, he said, it kind of hurts my heart. And he was like, because I know through my work spouse that her husband and I would get along really well. We've got the same, you know, interest and we've got the same humor, it sounds like. And he said, but he just, I've tried to be his friend. He doesn't want anything to do with me. So. Yes. Did any of the men actually um, say their work spouse was a man? Yes. <laughs> and um, the ones that did generally commented, I know it sounds maybe kind of funny or it might seem odd to people. So, but yes, there were, there were male, male works past relationships. Janice, did you have a question? Yes. Um, did any of those that broke up or moved on to other jobs, because we change jobs so frequently mm -hmm. now, right? Did they develop other similar relationships at other jobs? Like, are they serially monogamous? <laughs> um, it's, it's funny you mentioned that because, first of all, um, one of the one of the participants, one of the few that said, I don't have a work spouse, she talked about he's a polygamist, and she even used that word. And she said, he has multiple work wives. It's just who's available to talk to. Um, and then going back to your question of separating, the majority, there was only one couple that they had, quote unquote, broken up because he had moved, um, gosh, almost a thousand miles away, and he had not found a relationship like that yet. And he was still in... Um, you know, talk to his prior work spouse all the time. So, and he's, you know, and but he would tell you he's a happily married man. So it's not, you know, he's still kept both his work spouse long distance and him and his wife moved clear across the country. So. Yeah, it would be interesting, I think, to follow people over a period of Yes, I would love to check back in in like five years and see, because I know of, um, Gosh, at least three right now that someone's moved away or switched jobs or um, one was in the process of, like I said, and she knew it was going to, you know, influence it. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to do a follow-up. Oh. I think when you, when you have a pos very positive relationship like this, especially early in your professional career, it's something you seek out as you move. Ah. Um, you, another unique situation is I move jobs every two years mm -hmm. through 20 years of service because that's just the process of serving in the military. And so I found myself as had more and more of those types of relationships, mm -hmm. making it a priority to identify who I could connect to in that mm -hmm. way because it would make that work experience that much better. I knew it would um, from those prior experiences. I had one male participant almost say, identical to what you said. He said he'd had multiple and he he found them all to be unique in that situation but you know similar to what you said he said I know the positives of it and so yeah when I so I guess there are some people that say I want to work I want to work spouse. I was wondering if there's certain personalities that tend to always have a work spouse no matter mm -hmm. where they are mm -hmm. that as they go to another job then they have another one. Absolutely. And one thing I didn't touch on, or there were a couple participants that they talked about um, a broken work spouse relationship. In fact, one participant in it said, you know, I, I refused to have another work spouse because this one had gone so bad. But then, you know, like a lot of intimate relationships that just developed and he or she couldn't help that it formed. 
What were the age groups of your work spouses? Like, did you notice a trend in like either like early 30s or older, or was there more younger people in that work spouse relationships too? The, it was all over the spectrum, um, but most were pretty comparable in their ages. So I had participants um, in 20s, 30s, 40s, even 50s. And most of the time their work spouses were very similar in age. In fact, one, um, one couple, they talked about that was one of the reasons that they, their relationship developed is that they had children the same age, their children were in the same activities. Um, however, one of the opposite sex relationships, there was about a 20 year age difference. And so uh, they referred to themselves more as like a father daughter kind of role. And he even talked about, I have a daughter that's a year younger than her. So. Um, touching on Emma, was there a difference in power in the workplace? Like a higher paid position? Yes. Them, yes. Um, in fact, the, the, Kaylin gal who talked about um, her husband and uh, mom saying she's not your real, real friend, she's not your real friend. She taught, you know, she talked about the power difference not only um, gave her difficulties with her co-workers on the same spectrum, but she also felt like due to her being my boss and my work spouse, I probably do more than I should because I want to keep her happy and I, and I truly, you know, value her friendship and so she you know she admitted I do more work and I'll offer to help out if I'm not doing something because of our relationship which it, I, I really wanted to interview Kaylin's work spouse but just because I would have liked to have seen there if she was on the same same page yes. was there anything with these work spouses and how you're able to measure the quality of work that was performed you no. mentioned that they would take longer breaks mm -hmm. or they would do this and that I, I didn't see anything yeah we worked 40 extra hours mm -hmm. that week to get something done yeah no I did not look at that but that would definitely be something interesting to look at because a lot of them talked about oh it makes work better and we you know it makes me happy to go there um, but one particular um, male participant, he talked about how when they were next to each other in the same cubicle, and he said, and then she moved to another part of the building, and um, it, was, he, it was almost like he was somewhat traumatized by it, and so he said, now we just spend all our time on the phone. So it kind of makes you wonder, hmm, how, he said, I talk to her more than I talk to my wife on the phone, so he. And then were, the, were your interviewees were they satisfied with work? Was that a question that you asked them? It was not a question I looked at, but that would also be interesting. And I did have, um, in terms of negatives of work spouse relationships, one um, participate, participant said, you know, the negative is, is I, you know, I love and adore her so much that it makes work comfortable and I almost don't want to look for new jobs. She said, in fact, I, I saw one the other day that I probably should have applied for and I don't want to because I'm comfortable here and I enjoy seeing her every day. So I guess too much comfort could, you know, not be a good thing. Yes. What was the percentage selected from the people that filled out, originally filled out the questionnaire? The questionnaire, it was about close to like 42%. And how, on the questionnaire, you had six out of eight would qualify. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you determine that threshold? Um, I listened to my doctoral chair. <laughs> Can I be honest? So, yeah. I know there were people that, it was interesting. I had people fill out the survey, and then, you know, I would obviously thank them and say, you know, unfortunately, you um, did not qualify for this interview. And I, I had people say, no, I have a work spouse, though, and I uh, understand that, you know, so I still have people that inquire about it. In the future, you might want to look at um, the trauma associated with separation that occurs. Ah. You've mentioned it already, uh -huh. but having gone through a, a, a life period where it was every two years, you switched this up. It, it's finding a new normal in the workspace, mm -hmm. because when you become dependent on 
or you know you work so closely with this person and and your quality of your work and the quantity of your work is enhanced by it and then that relationship ends because the person moves on to another assignment or promotion or whatever both the, the person moving on is moving to a new environment that's going to be changing anyways the person that remains it's a new normal that they have to find mm -hmm. and that's another element yeah in fact and i actually interviewed one couple um, where one of the participants she received a promotion and she talked about how she felt the promotion hurt their relationship um, and then when i interviewed the other one separately she talked about how i wasn't supportive when my work spouse received this promotion like I should have been. And so there was definitely, one felt like I had to downplay the promotion. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't be excited with, you know, my bestie. And, and the other one felt like I know I wasn't, you know, because why didn't I get it? So. Shonda, of that 30, how many were couples? Ooh. Work couples. Work couples. About half. And like I said, some, um, the, their, their work, their presumed work spouse didn't want to even take the pre-qualifying survey. Um, and some did take it and didn't qualify. And then others <coughs> did qualify, but declined to be interviewed. So, yeah. Have you ever thought about going back and comparing the ones that didn't qualify to the ones that did qualify? Like interviewing the ones that didn't mm -hmm. qualify originally? and comparing the two to see what the difference is? I have not, but that, that would be interesting. That would definitely, to see if the dimensions and characteristics match up, yeah. That's a good suggestion. Yes. Is, there, is there a better terminology to use when talking about, like, okay, so for example, when a uh, work spouse relationship like breaks up, mm -hmm. um, so like, if it's closer to like a familiar relationship, you can't just like break up with your like sister or your brother mm -hmm. or your parent, you know, so is there like a better terminology or is there like some ongoing work on that or like? You know, it, in my doctoral defense, um, one of the things the committee said was, we need to change this, the word, the words work spouse just don't work. They said it brings that romantic connotation and I think it probably scared people away. Um, or people just presume, because when you hear the word spouse. And so, and so the six of us sat there and we tried to brainstorm and we, well, work friend, no, because it's more than a friendship. And, uh, and so unfortunately, six, six of us could not figure it out. So if you have a good thought, let me know. So, because we, I do think, absolutely, you hear the term spouse and you presume, you know, romance, so. Did you have any people take the survey that were actually spouses? Like, did you look at like spouses that actually work together and whether they have a work spouse relationship or whether they try to keep their relationship very professional? I did not, but that would be something interesting to, to look at. Yeah. It's a lot of time with someone. <laughs> Is there any evidence of abusive relationships in any of the discussions you run into? You know, going back to the, the gal whose mom and her husband weren't supportive of it, throughout her entire interview, I, I honestly kept thinking like, oh, this, this is not good. This, you know, and I, I do think there was perhaps, and granted, it's an, you know, an hour interview and I don't know these people personally, but I did see what I would presume manipulation and deceptive behaviors occurring, so. Um, did you, other than uh, in the interview, did you also use other methodology like participant observation to gather data? Did you observe any work spouse in real in them? I did not. That's something I would like to do in the future, though. And another follow up is that how their co workers, others in the organization, maybe management, how did they view this relationship? First of all, did they recognize uh, them as work spouse? Mm -hmm. And if so, what was their reaction? Positive, negative, mm -hmm. ignoring? The, you know, the majority did, and it's funny, um, 
The three that didn't believe that they had a work spouse relationship um, had the majority of those themes that I categorized as dimensions and characteristics. Um, one male in particular, you know, he said, no, she's just a coworker, but then he talked about, you know, but we go to coffee every day and she can talk about her family with me. And so, but you know, when directly asked, he was like, no, she's just, she's just a coworker. So, yeah. Did you ever encounter any that admitted to having like multiples? Cause I know me personally at work, I tend to have multiple people that would kind of fall into this. Maybe yes. It's a group of us that think similarly or like the same things and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So did anybody admit to having multiple? The, um, the one of the gals who said she did not believe her work spouse was indeed a work spouse. She talked about one of the reasons was because he had multiple and she said it's just who's ever available to talk to. Um, and another gal, she talked about she had several work wives and she said, but she's my number one. That was why it was unique. And she specifically said, you know, she's my number one. So, yes. Out of the 30 people that you interviewed, how many of them, or do you know, I guess, had significant others at home or spouses at home compared to maybe only having a work spouse? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> off the top of my head right now, I can only think of one that didn't have a significant other at home. I'm, th I'm thinking, but yeah. So the majority were did have a significant other also at home. Cause it's like that comparison of what that intimate relationship or mm -hmm. spousal what mm -hmm. that means to different people. If yeah. You experience that or not? I don't know if that would yeah make a difference or not. I know. I'm trying to. Th I think right now. That, gosh, that's the only one. I'm still. Yeah. Because they either had a you know, a serious significant other, or were engaged, or um, married. There were a couple that were divorced, but were back to you know having a dating relationship. So most most of them were had someone at home. What got you interested in the concept of a work spouse? Um, I was at the University of Southern Mississippi and I had to, um, we were examining gender communication and I was looking up in a book um, gender case studies and someone had um, something about one and um, oddly enough he's a professor at Creighton University and being a Nebraska gal at the time I was like oh Creighton, oh Omaha and so um, I read that and then I realized oh this is just a case study there's not really much there and so I ran it by my dissertation chair and that's how we started looking at it. Is there a typical length of time for work spouse relationships? There really wasn't and it was interesting when I looked at how they develop um, some people, it was funny, they said, I knew almost immediately. And then others said, oh, about a year, year and a half. Um, and there were a few that they actually knew their work spouse in a prior time period in their life um, and, you know, knew each other but didn't have that relationship. So that was also interesting. So, but, you know, like a lot of other intimate relationships, there was not a universal set time on when they felt like it happened. Any other questions? If not, um, first of all, if you didn't pick up a survey, I'd really appreciate it if you do that. And thank you very much, Dr. French. Thank you very much.